Hello everyone, it's Gojira Prime with another Transformers video and today uh, I'm going to talk about Transformers Earthspark. Uh, now it's half past 11 at night, um, November 7th, and the first episode of Transformers Earthspark has dropped on the Nickelodeon UK YouTube channel. Um, now I saw a notification from TF Nation about this, so I've given the episode a watch, um, and I want to just run through the base of the story with you. Uh, so there will be some spoilers in this um, video, and also give you my thoughts on what I thought of the first episode. So I'll go through the story of the first episode first, so if you don't want to know anything about that, stop watching right now um, and come back to this video once you have watched the episode. So the episode begins with Swindle and Hardtop uh, who isn't a character we usually see in TV, conducting a raid on a Autobot uh, Energon storage facility um, for whatever reason, I'm guessing for fuel, for ammo, um, whatever. And they are intercepted by Alita One and Optimus Prime. Now, they are able to capture Swindle and hardtop, uh, but Swindle is able to escape when a large number of arachnid-type robots appear and attempt to take down all four Cybertonians, but are stopped by Prime and Alita. Now, from there, we then go to the Malto family. So I'm just gonna go back to the um, main page here on TF Wiki because I, I can't remember the characters' names off the bat. So we meet um, Robbie, Mo, Dot and Alex who have just recently moved to the town of Witwicky from Philadelphia. And there is a fair bit of family troubles because Robbie does not want to be in Witwicky. Uh, we actually meet the brother and sister as on the roof of their house trying to use a kite to get Wi-Fi because they can't get Wi-Fi anywhere in the house save one room. Um, now after a family argument, um, Robbie decides to run away back to Philadelphia by using his uh, BMX bike, but he's followed by his sister, who's trying to convince him to stay. And they run into the convoy, which is transporting um, hardtop to prison. The convoy is intercepted by a large number of these arachnid robots, or sorry, arachnomex. They're actually called here. I just saw, I just saw the name for them on the on the screen. The arachnomex, and the children are forced to jump off a bridge. They land in a valley or a gully, and um, while they're down there, they end up discovering the Earth Spark. Obviously, it's not called the Earth Spark, or they don't know it's the Earth Spark at this moment in time. Now, the Robbie, Robbie and, and Mo proceed to touch the All Spark, which activates it, and then it spouts something about legacy. I couldn't quite hear what it was saying. And it attaches to them their cyber gauntlets. And then the characters of Twitch and Thrash are born, created, and the gauntlets allow the children to communicate telepathically or empathically with Twitch and Thrash, so they can sense each other's emotions, and through this they're able to develop a very quick bond of trust. trust. Um, they're then spotted by an Arachnomech, which I think it's Twitch destroys, 
um, because she has inbuilt weaponry. Um, I have to point out all the, the the bots in this series with their weapon systems, aside from their handheld weapons, which are mostly you know swords, axes, or the like. Uh, they have inbuilt hand weaponry, like in uh, Prime and RID, and I think Cyberverse did this as well. Um, to a certain point where their hands will transform into their weapons. So they've, they've stuck with that kind of gimmick um, in the show. Now, kids being kids, um, instead of actually telling their parents they've discovered these two newborn Cybertonians, for lack of a better term at this point, um, I know they're called Terrans on this page, um, they decide to keep them a secret and teach them what it means to be a Transformer. Um, and they do this by first sh uh, showing them comic books that were written um, depicting the conflict between the Autobots and Decepticons. This doesn't work out particularly well. Um, so they instead get their dad um, to tell them the story of how the Autobots and Decepticons came to Earth. And this provides a little bit of backstory for this particular continuity. And we have this flashback sequence. The flashback sequence for me actually was probably, was actually quite the, an interesting part of the episode because the flashback sequence was done using G1 style characters um, and a G1 version of Cybertron um, for the flashback sequences. It was actually quite nice to watch, actually. Um, so to, to give the continu to, to fill in the continuity here a little bit, the war starts on Cybertron, as it always does, between the Autobots and Decepticons. Um, then for some reason, Optimus and a core force of Autobots, which includes Alita One and Grimlock, oddly enough, um, travel to Earth to combat the Decepticons there. And then at some point during the conflict, the Autobots meet up with Dot Malto, who works with them through the US military. And Optimus destroys the space bridge back to Cybertron, essentially trapping all of the Cybertonians that are on Earth on Earth. Um, so they can't ever get back home. They don't have a ship. They don't have the Ark. They don't have the Nemesis. They were totally reliant on this one space bridge. So the fate of Cybertron is completely unknown to them. Um, it's probably end up being run by um, Shockwave. It usually ends up being run by him anyway. Um, the... Kids then try to continue to teach thrash and twitch more about being cybertonians and then we cut back to mom uh dot who discovers the ghost convoy uh ghost is the military organization that's comprised of humans and cybertonians and for some reason it doesn't answer this question as to what happened to all the humans that were in this convoy they just seem to have mysteriously disappeared um don't know where they are um, she proceeds to try and cordon off the area and then Optimus and Alita One turn up and instead of being in shock and awe, um, she's like, you know, you just knocked over all my cones, um, because she knows Optimus, she knows Alita One, and at that point she discovers that her assignment to w Wiki has actually been arranged by Optimus Prime because he wants the best and brightest human soldier he ever worked with here because there's been a lot of Decepticon activity and the Decepticons are going missing for some reason and it all ties into these Arachnomechs. Um, at that point, the episode ends with the arrival of Megatron and it's that scene where he lands, picks up Dot Malto and they have this friendly banter with each other, which I found a little bit weird when we saw the scene. And but it, it, it ends just as he's picked the episode ends just as he's picking Dot up and growling at her, um, for lack of a better term. Um, we also see that Hardtop is being partially dissected 
by Mandroid um, in the show as well. Um, not to death, but he has his left arm or his right, his right arm um, removed for study. And that's where the episode ends. Um, so... I don't think it was a bad first episode, by all means. I still have um, a few issues with the show, but mostly in regard to design aesthetics more than anything. Um, now, being a, a lore kind of guy, I, I like the backstory, the lore behind the characters. Obviously, this is a kid's show at the end of the day, and I do appreciate that fact. Um, we're not given a lot of background information here. We're given, like, the bare basics. You know, the Transformers came to Earth, they fought with the Decepticons, they destroyed the Space Bridge, they're all trapped here now, and that's about it. We don't yet really know why Megatron has turned on the Decepticons. We don't know the fate of Cybertron. Um, we don't know why Mandroid has such a burning hatred of Decepticons. I'm guessing, you know, they did something to him in the past. Um, and we certainly don't know where the Earth Spark com came from and why, um, you know, after possibly millions of years of dormancy, it's now active and producing Transformers. So it's a very bare basics introduction to the show. It introduces us to the first in you know the, the core characters, Prime, Alita, Twitch, Thrash, the Malto family, Megatron, and Mandroid. Mandroid not so much. It's like he's in it for like ten seconds maximum. He's in this very, very little. Um so it introduces us to the very bare basic core characters. Um Bumblebee's not in this episode as of yet. I'm guessing he'll turn up in episode two or three, something like that, I'm guessing. Um, but I don't think it was a very bad intro to this new continuity, but I do think it maybe didn't flesh out things as much as it could have done. I personally would have preferred the initial episode to have been an hour's special you know um you know, the first three episodes back to back setting up the characters the lore the background who's who's why they're doing what they're doing but this doesn't really do that um in this one singular episode um which is a bit of a shame but it, it's not bad by any means but it just doesn't have enough meat on the bones to grab me, per se. I'm still not overly keen on Optimus's design, and I'm a big Optimus Prime fan. He is my you know, he's my favorite Transformer. There, there is also the issue of his voice. Um, the voice actor who is playing Optimus Prime, I've seen, you know, he's been in the Transformers franchise before. He was in Dark of the Moon, and obviously he's known for um, Serenity, uh, Firefly as well, as one of the, the core cast of that show. But for me, Optimus Prime always has to kind of stand out and have presence. And you got that with Peter Cullen in his G1 version, his Prime version, and his movie version, you could always recognize Optimus Prime's voice. It's the same with Gary Chalk and David Kane. Um, you could recognize, if you heard their voices and they were saying the lines, you knew that they were doing Optimus Prime. At the moment, if I closed my eyes and I heard these lines, you could throw in 
any character's name instead of Optimus Prime, and I would not know that this was Optimus Prime. It's, it's just not imposing enough for me. Uh, people may disagree with me on that, but that's just the way I feel. Um, Alita 1's design is very nice, actually. I quite like Alita's robot mode. Um, didn't really see a lot of the vehicle mode in the show, um, but, you, you know, you saw quite a bit of the robot mode. And in the battle sequence at the beginning, um, she actually uses her wheels to give her the ability to dart around quickly and to move out of the way of things, which I thought was a really nice touch. Um, Hardtop, can't really say anything about Hardtop. Uh, he was in and out of it very, very quickly. Swindle was a bit interesting. Um, very G1 design with a hint of animated thrown in, in, in regard to his look. I, th I quite liked his design, actually. Um, but the voice, when he spoke, it had a very New York-style accent to me. Now, admittedly, I don't spend a lot of time around people from New York because I live in the UK. But I heard his, you know, I could close my eyes, I could have sworn, that's Rat Trap. You know, from Beast Wars. Um, which I thought was um, a bit interesting. Um, there was one other reference to past Transformers lore in the show, which was the character of John Henry from Hearts of Steel. Uh, be nice if we got some connection there in the show, which would be nice. But, yeah, I mean, um, what else? The, arach the arachnoid design, I think, is quite interesting. It's quite good. It's very intimidating. Um, Whenever I see robots on mass like that, I always think of the Mausers from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I don't know why, I just do. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's not a bad episode by any means. It's only the first episode, for crying out loud. I'm not going to you know, destroy the whole series in just based on one episode. But interesting episode. Needs more meat on the bones in regard to the background and the lore. But... Yeah, it's okay, it's not great, it just needs more meat on the bones. So, go over to the UK Nickelodeon channel if you can access it. Um, have a watch of the episode, see what you think. Uh, let me know what you think. I'd love to see what other people think about this. It's it's a new show, it's a new continuity. So, I'm I'm more than willing to give it a chance. So, please comment below, hit the like button, subscribe. Thank you very much and have a good day.